Hello, this is Discover, and we take customer service very seriously. We know that if you have a question or concern about your credit card, that's a serious matter, and you need to talk to a real person about it. So we offer around-the-clock access to seriously talented representatives in the USA. Again, it's a serious endeavor. The only funny thing about it is Bob. If you call us and Bob answers, you're in for a treat. Get 100% U.S.-based customer service and talk to a real person day or night. Discover exceptionally common sense. At Kroger, we know the holiday season is going to be special for everyone. So use the Kroger app to get personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. That way you'll get all the fresh holiday specialties you love at prices that are lower than low. Kroger, fresh for everyone. And now you'll find more ways to save on your favorites. When you download digital coupons, you can use up to five times in one transaction. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. Twas a big Wednesday indeed. Actually, not quite as long as some recent ones. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's Fantasy NBA Today, a sports ethos presentation. I am your host, Dan Vespers, and we got a pretty big Wednesday to recap. Although I would like to once again ask anybody that listened to yesterday's double pod, what did you guys think about just the mere... And, and I know that it, that's not sort of the the perfect solution to a double pod, meaning, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, yesterday, after the news of Bam Adebayo's surgery broke, we put out a quick 10-minute breaking news pod. Now, it just so happened that we were just about to record the day's actual pod anyway, so it's a a little bit dumb maybe to have them go back-to-back like that, but I wanted to try something where if there was breaking news like six, seven, eight hours later, then maybe we slip in the breaking news pod. I don't know. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. It'll, it will actually dictate whether or not I do something like that again in the future. I am your host, Dan Bespris. You can follow me on Twitter at Dan Bespris. And without further ado, let's dive in. Denver blew a big lead in Orlando. Magic came storming back in the second half. They are... Simply a much, much better team with Cole Anthony on the floor. He had no minutes restriction coming back from his ankle stuff and had a pretty big ball game. So all systems go on Cole Anthony. The fact that other guys remain out allowed Franz Wagner to continue his recent uh, warmer stretch. I still don't know that this is something we can ride indefinitely, but he's pushed himself up back inside the top 120 on the year and kind of moving from decent streamer to king of the streamers, which I guess is like, in business parlance, you're like the best intern. Uh, If he keeps it up, he gets himself back in the mix. And when he's hot right now, I think you probably roll with it. But from an overall standpoint, you know me, and we talked about it even on yesterday's podcast. As soon as I get cute with something like this, a guy that fluctuates between startable and not startable, that's that's when things flip. All of these are sort of finite amounts of time. But uh, all the starters were actually decent. You're not rolling great Gary Harris out there. He just doesn't... I know he had three steals and a block in this ballgame, but generally he just doesn't do enough to get himself on the ledger. Weto Carter, Jr., Mo Bamba, those are the guys you're using on the Orlando side. For Denver, Nikola Jokic was decidedly human in this ballgame, and I don't know if you want to put that on anything Orlando did or if he just sort of ran out of gas partway through... But uh, they needed more from him. Monte Morris, Aaron Gordon, Facundo Campazzo were all pretty good. Will Barton was kind of meh. Campazzo uh, is interesting. I don't even have a great ball game. He only took three shots, super low usage for a backup point guard. But he got the few things he was supposed to get, which I think puts him probably in that streamer territory as well. Weird to see Monte Morris willing to take 15 shots. I don't. I don't like it. And then I know with Aaron Gordon, I'm I'm probably too stubborn here. He's pushed himself up to number 112 on the season overall. You guys heard a Discord blooping in the background there that I probably can't pull out. Uh, and he's shooting 52% from the field right now, although at the same time, you kind of have to feel like that 
is going to come down at some point. I know he's getting better looks with Denver than he got with Orlando, and that plays a role in it. Uh, I just, oh, man. I know, you know what? Do it if you need to. I, I, he's just kind of that guy that I can't bring myself around on. Ugh, I shudder. I shudder just thinking about it. Atlanta, uh, late comeback here once again. Indiana's blown a lot of late leads. TJ McConnell hurt his wrist very early in this ballgame. He had already kind of trended down into streamer land or guy you use extremely effectively when anyone for the Pacers is out of the starting lineup. I mean, they started him when Miles Turner was out of the starting lineup, remember? And then Brogdon, when he's down, he goes. When Karis LeVert is down, he tends to get an opportunity there as well. Um, but if he's hurt, he's a drop. And if they're healthy, he's a drop. And now both of those things are true with the exception of Justin Holiday, but I don't think that's enough. So McConnell, sorry, dude, you're, uh, you're in streamer land and there are simply more interesting things happening right now. Trey Young had another big ball game. He's having a really good year, better than expected. He's one of the rare players that's actually taken a step forward from last season, where a lot of the NBA is just kind of hanging out right where they were. Kevin Herter, we talked about with everybody hurt on this team. He's a brilliant play right now. Just keep him rolling him out there. And frankly, from this ballgame, there just wasn't really all that much stuff to worry about. Good. That allows us to move along at a pretty good clip. Washington uh, defeats Minnesota thanks to Daniel Gafford, who continues to push his way up the board. This is one we knew was coming. He's now up to number 83 per game in nine category leagues. He's still averaging only 21 minutes a game on the season overall, which I think is a pretty easy indicator that if you look at what Gafford's done lately, a what have you done for me lately type of moment, last two weeks, he's number 51. Last week, he's number nine. Why did we tell you guys to hang on or buy on Daniel Gafford this is why we told you guys to hang on or buy on Daniel Gafford. KCP actually continues to play pretty good basketball. He took 14 shots. That's the second most on the team in this ballgame. Montrez Harrell came off the bench and had himself a dunk fest. I believe he set a record for dunks in a ball game for Wizards, Wizards history. I don't remember what the number was exactly. Uh, but the problem, of course, is that prior to this one, he had been trending down pretty hard. Montrez Harrell, number 163 over the last week, and that's including this bigger ball game. So he's kind of been a drop quietly while no one's been sort of paying attention to it all. Spencer Dinwiddie, weird ball game. He went all Draymond Green on this one. He's actually been uh, pretty far outside of the usable territory also, number 164 over the last week. He's been bad. And then Bradley Beal, I, I mean, I don't... You know, I like the 20 shots, but it's down from the 23 last year. Missed some free throws. Isn't hitting three-pointers. He might just be, you know, more of a top 25 kind of guy, even once he gets the shot going this year. I think that's probably what we have to deal with. He's one of, we talked about it, the great settling. He's probably settling, and he's probably back of where we wanted him to be. What a pain in the butt. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns hurt his tailbone. X-rays were negative after the ball game, but uh, one based on the fact that uh, Jimmy Butler is uh, not back yet from his tailbone thing, and the X-rays I think were on Cat's lower back. Uh, assuming he'll probably have some tightness there, I guess he'll he'll miss a game or two. If you're looking for possible uh, short-term burst kind of guys, Nas Reed is a fantastic per minute guy now it's it's also quite conceivable that they just slide jared vanderbilt up for a few extra center minutes he's quite capable of getting there he's a big time rebounder defensive presence guy but i think they might want a little bit of the offensive punch that Nas can bring so put him on your list right now the list has grown quite long here over the last two or three four five days whatever you want to call it of you call it, players of note and considering how many there are, it's probably going to be difficult to make a case to pick up Nas Reed. He got added in, I think, two of my leagues because people saw Cat get hurt. And he's, he's an interesting one. It may only be a short-term thing, and it's possible folks picked him up already thinking that Cat is going to be out for a really long time. But maybe it's a week. I don't know. Maybe it's a week and a half. Maybe it's two. Whatever it might be. 
Nas, probably worth a move in a head-to-head league because he tends to go pretty fun style when he gets a few more minutes. And then in Roto, I do think he probably gets over the hump. But you could even wait a game and kind of see how the Wolves deploy their big men before going forward on the games cap side. So yeah, I would consider a Nas Reed ad if you're in a spot where you can make that move without having to sacrifice anything. But again, you kind of have to position him against some of the other dudes that you've already moved on over the last little bit. Now, many of them played actually on Wednesday. A lot of the guys we've talked about had Wednesday off, uh, but we'll get more information on those dudes. Uh, a few of them played a night and then a few more play on Friday. A couple teams had uh, a few days off in a row here mixed in. Quick break here after the first three ball games. So once again, remind you guys to, one, follow me on Twitter, at Dan Bespris, D-A-N-B-E-S-B-R-I-S. But also check out Sports Ethos, the brand new Sports Ethos, formerly Hoopball. It's sportsethos.com, E-T-H-O-A-S. There's no hyphen anymore. You don't have to worry about putting a dash in the middle of the website. And the Twitter handle for our fantasy feed is Ethos Fantasy BK for basketball because other sports are coming. Football, baseball, on the way. And if you want to be a part of that, please do hit me up on Twitter, at Dan Vesper. Send me a note. Let me know you're interested. Or email support at sportsethos.com and announce your interest. And I'll tell you, if you're writing in for an editor spot, check that grammar, folks. Hello, Discover here to explain our cash back match. Here's how it works. We give you cash back for using your Discover card on the things you were going to buy anyway. Then we match that cash back in your first year. And that's why we call it cash back match. Now to recap and say cash back one more time. We match all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year automatically. Discover, exceptionally common sense. Learn more at discover.com slash match. Limitations apply. Unjunk your sleep at Mattress Firm Cyber Week Sale and wake up a better you. Shop in-store or online and save up to $500 when you get a king bed for the price of a queen or a queen for a twin. Plus, get a free adjustable base with qualifying Sealy purchase up to a $4.99 value. Or save up to $500 on Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. And you can shop with confidence thanks to our low price guarantee. Unjunk your sleep only at Mattress Firm. Offer valid with qualifying purchase. Restrictions apply. See details at mattressfirm.com. This podcast also brought to you by our buddies at mybookie.ag. I think I might have decided what I'm going to get with my $350 of found money over this last weekend. It's none of your damn business what I'm going to get, but I think I finally decided, I don't know, one of these websites where I can get like a 5% rebate on it, get 17 and a half bucks back, and then spend that on something else. Who doggy? I'm making the most of my, my found money over at mybookie.ag. If you guys still don't have an account, you're nuts. Use promo code HOOPBALL when you sign up. Again, we still haven't uh, rolled over to a new promo code. Use that promo code HOOPBALL when you sign up. Uh, It'll unlock some deposit uh, match bonuses. And then also, just follow me. There's an odds boost tomorrow, actually. There's, uh, it's Steph Curry to score, I think it's like 24 and a half points. They've moved the number down from whatever the traditional expectation is for him. I think the number was uh, originally 27 and a half and they brought it down three points for free. So yeah, I mean, good things. Normally buying three points on that would cost you 30 or 40 bucks on, on the VIG. Uh, and it doesn't right now. I believe it's a $25 max bet on that NBA odds boost. I think they're calling it a beer, beer Friday or something like that. I don't, it doesn't matter what it's called, but there's another one out there. I just keep getting money. All right, back to, the, back to the grind here. Cleveland beat the daylights out of Miami. And, of course, this actually is one of the teams where we were going to try to get a feel uh, for the, the, the new names, new players floating around. Dwayne Dedman was the guy we were all kind of wondering about. What do we do with Dwayne Dedman? Do we add him? How much is he going to play? Well, I do believe that with Jimmy Butler out... You saw more Deadman than usual because they kind of had no choice but to stay a little bit bigger. And Cleveland is one of the biggest teams in the NBA. They run a front court of Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, and Lowry Markinen. Basically like three seven-footers all coming at you from the small forward, power forward, and center spots. I mean, give or take an inch or two. 
So you kind of have no choice but to try to combat that with a measure of bigness of your own. And the Cavs have Kevin Love coming off the bench, who had a, a huge ball game here. And he's actually not been bad lately, although I think easier to use as a head-to-head streamer because you just you don't want to catch him on that weird night where everything goes wrong in Roto. But Love was great. Mobley was great. Jared Allen was great. Darius Garland was pretty good. He was fine. Ricky Rubio's uh, tailed off a bit here lately. More like a top 130 guy over the last couple of weeks. But I think that probably comes back a hair. At the very least, he's been very cold from the field. Three-pointers not dropping. I wouldn't punt on Rubio. Uh, He was certainly a guy to move on the Sexton news. That was kind of the sell-high moment. Now he's settling into that you know, 90, 100 range kind of thing. Uh, but on the Miami side, Omer Yurtsevin only played four minutes. And I think that's a pretty good sign that he's not really ready to be a front court factor. P.J. Tucker could be a very small ball center, a la what the Houston Rockets did a couple years ago. But if they're going up against a big team like the Cavs, they almost have no choice but to play Dwayne Dedman. Now, they might go up against a team that exploits big men, and Dedman won't get 31 minutes. That was the second most of anyone on the team behind just Tyler Hero, who got 37 minutes in this ballgame yesterday. But certainly, and you know, we talked about it a bunch on the podcast yesterday before this ballgame, Dedman was an interesting sort of uh, high-floor low ceiling kind of guy where this might be one of the best games he puts up during the six weeks that Bam is out. But they've got Indiana, uh, Indianapolis. They've got Indiana on the docket. They're a big team. Milwaukee to follow. Not quite as large of a team, but I mean, from a uh, slowness in the front court standpoint, they're a little quicker. Memphis, they're a little quicker. Milwaukee again. So we'll get, I think, a better idea of what to really expect from Deadman. But if you need a big man who won't, kill you in the percentages and can historically he's done the one 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 thing before Dwayne's that guy I don't know that we need to spend a ton of time on it we dedicated about like six minutes in that uh, breaking news pod to Deadman yesterday but again I mean he's he's giving I think a, a perfectly reasonable uh, uh reasonable reason that's a sort of a weird way to put it but Like, there's a spot for that on most fantasy teams. Not all, but, like, what if you've got Evan Fournier or, like, Carmelo Anthony lately or DeAnthony Melton, who hasn't been all that great, or DeAndre Bembry or something like that. I think there's a case to be made that you could go Deadman in those spots and it wouldn't be the worst idea in the universe. That's all. I don't know that you have to, and I don't think that... You're going to be kicking yourself when you look up and he has like 10 and 8 with a steal and a block. He's not going to dramatically elevate your fantasy team, but he could fill the role of kind of a slightly below average second center. Most teams want a second fantasy center that's in that like 80 range, and he might be just a shade underneath that. I don't know. Anyway, the Heat offense was terrible. They scored 85 points in this game. They very clearly need Jimmy Butler back, and hopefully he'll be back for the next one because this is what happens when your key guys get hurt. Sometimes a team can hold it together. The Heat are 13-9, and but they've lost the two games without Jimmy. They need him back. It's as simple as that, and you're seeing the great leveling. That's actually taking place in standings as well. Bucks have won eight games in a row. Wizards bouncing back. They're a much better home team than road. Raptors have now, unfortunately, lost three games in a row. I, I do think maybe we, we, I, underestimated how much home court was going to matter. There's some serious home road splits going on. And some of them are straight goofy. The Raptors are 2-8 and eight back in Canada. 7-5 and five on the road. It's almost like they don't remember how to be back at home. Most teams are the other way. Hornets, 7-2 and two at home, 6-9 and nine on the road. Hawks, 8-2 and two at home, 4-8 and eight on the road. Like, teams with decent records that could not win a game on the road to save their lives. The, the Blazers are maybe the funniest one of them all. They're 10-1 and one at home, 1-10 and 10 on the road. Grizzlies, 7-5 and five at home, 4-5 and five on the road. Clippers, 9-6 and six at home, 2-4 and four on the road. They played almost their entire schedule at home so far. By the way, if you're looking for a time to fade the Clippers, it might be an upcoming road trip. 
Anywho, we'll keep on trugging here. Uh, Philly, Boston, um, 88 to 87, which was also apparently the year this game took place. Gross. Jason Tatum had 16 rebounds, though, so he got himself in the mix in other ways. He actually had one of the better shooting nights on the Celtics, a team that couldn't make a shot to save their lives. Tatum's still shooting under 40% overall this year. He has nine rebounds a game right now. All we need is for that shot to start going in a little bit, and everything comes together. Jalen Brown still doesn't appear to be fully healthy. It was one of the reasons that I didn't draft him, although generally I just thought he was getting overdrafted because he scores a lot, but he's always had knee and back stuff, mostly knees, um, and that just doesn't really go away when it's chronic like that. Marcus Smart cooled off a little bit. Robert Williams came... uh, I mean, he was back already. He played relatively well. Al Horford, 10-8 and eight with five blocks. Again, Big Al just continues to hang on. He's number 25 still in nine cat leagues. That's one of the best late picks. And, you know, I'll admit I didn't think he would stay quite this high. I think we all figured he'd fall back towards maybe the edge of the top 50. Still at 25. Still chugging along. Although... I think he's been more like a top 50 kind of guy after that very quick start. Still, you know, as long as he rolls in that range, the fast start will pull the average up a little bit from wherever the other stuff is happening. Uh, Joel Embiid had a horrible ball game, but he did offensively. He had 18 rebounds, though, six assists, two steals, three blocks, so he was able to kind of float himself in the other stuff. Tobias Harris has been off since he came back. I think we'll get that straightened out soon enough. Tyrese Maxey had a bad shooting game. Celtics defensively are actually very, very good. So I want to make sure we give credit where credit's due. But really on that Sixers side, kind of the only thing we're tracking right now is what's going to happen with Matisse Thybul. 20-some-odd minutes for him is usually enough. You're not going to get that you know top 30-type production we were getting when everybody was out, and he actually got to do some stuff offensively. He slides back more into a Rob Covington-like profile. 22 minutes. I mean, that's that's close. Only two defensive stats. Usually he'll probably get you between two and three in that amount of time. I think if he can stick in the 23-24 minute range, that should be enough for him. And most games, I think he'll probably get there. Jake Milton was a little bit better than almost everybody else on the Sixers in this game. So he saw a little bit of extra time. Seth Curry, who's going to play good minutes as a starter, he got some bonus run because he was also one of the hot hands. Uh, I think Thibault, Thibault's a hold. We're we're sticking with him here. He's been too good. And uh, again, he doesn't need a truckload of minutes to get there. On the season, he's number 57 in 25 and a half minutes. So if you pull like two off of that, He should still be in the 75 range, I would think. And again, he mostly does it with steals and blocks. The other stuff is kind of irrelevant. I don't know how Milwaukee won this game, but they did. Charlotte got off to a really good start. Game tightened up down the stretch. Grayson Allen finally had a better ball game again. But unfortunately, I can't wipe out the memory of the, like, seven bad ones in a row. And if this is him getting on a heater, terrific. I just don't believe it is. Nine shots was basically the most he's gotten to in about three weeks. And it came against the one team in the NBA that is playing the least defense in the NBA, Charlotte. Hornets, by the way, are just a terrific, they're a fantasy factory because they're playing fast and loose. They're uh, passing, they're shooting, they're running. They are super fun, even if they're not going to go anywhere come playoff time without guarding somebody, but they're they're creating an atmosphere now where everybody gets fantasy stuff. They shot the ball well, too. I mean, this is a weird, but like, it came down to the wire, as it should have. They just got out-rebounded 45-36, to 36, and that was the ball game, because the Hornets hit 21 threes. LaMelo Ball had eight of them. He's amazing. Holy crap, did that dude take a massive leap forward. Still a 90% foul shooter. Three threes and two steals per game. Goodness gracious. Gordon Hayward was fine. He had a better ball game here. Um, He's number 62. I think that's 
probably where he stays. Terry Rozier didn't score as well in this one, but did have eight assists, three steals, and a block. He's been on a pretty good steals bender lately. And uh, Rozier, as a result, has moved up to number 41? Holy crap, is that right? Wow, has he moved fast. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so he's rocketed up the board. Rozier is in the 40s. That's, uh... Well, you look away for one second. I remember he was at like 120. And then it was 100, and then 80, and then 60. Like, he's literally, almost legitimately done it like 15 to 20 slots per game. Wow. Good job, Terry. He was an easy value on draft night because he was falling for no clear reason. Miles Bridges, he continues to be uh, good enough, although he's, you know, like Horford, slightly less so than a guy like Harrison Barnes falling. Bridges down to number 29 now. I do think he continues to fall back towards the edge of the top 50. Although, if his team plays this fast... Maybe he continues to hold on. P.J. Washington is a fantastic play right now. I do wonder what's going to happen when Mason Plumlee comes back because those guys were splitting the minutes. Plumlee's been out, so it's been the Washington show. And then the other kind of interesting note is that Kelly Oubre suddenly looks kind of consistent. And I feel like I need to be... I need to be consistent in my analysis, which was, which was basically, look, if Ubre can actually do this, he did it once, and I said, I got to see this a few more times. And he's actually now done it a few more times. So I kind of feel like I have to take note, which I guess is the jazz thing, isn't it? Is that still the jazz thing? Used to be. Um, Ubre is over-rostered in fantasy leagues, considering how many spots he was terrible for so long. But if he's on the wire, he's getting enough shots right now to be a fantasy player. I had him in one spot. I dropped him when he was looking terrible, and uh, he's since been added in that league. Uh, But he looks pretty good these days. Despite the fact that he's almost doing nothing besides scoring and hitting threes, he's added a few steals here lately, but he is scoring and hitting a lot of threes without doing much else. And is it bad? free throw shooter the the bottom can fall out pretty quick but uh, again he's been hot Giannis 40 12 and 9 it's remarkable how much he can do and still not be a top fantasy guy and it's all free throws he is back to being the single biggest negative impact foul shooter in the NBA and it's it's really not close this year like there's no one even in the vicinity Rudy Gobert is not anywhere near Giannis in that one category. If you punt free throws, Giannis goes from 15 to 2. He's right behind Nikola Jokic. But most of us aren't punting free throws. So Giannis is number 15. And it's not like turnovers are even all that bad. At 3.2, he's like right in there with all the other top-tier guys. Blah, blah, blah. Changed his free throw stroke. Blah, blah, blah. He's still taking 10 a game. And hitting two-thirds of them. That'll sink you. Can't do that with a first-round pick. You can't take that kind of chance. Middleton looks like he's got his game back. Drew Holiday, uh, he's he's had his game back for a couple of weeks now. It, it's fun to see him kind of coasting along. Last two weeks, he's inside the top 50, despite missing uh, almost all of his free throws over that stretch. Kind of a weird little subplot with him that I'm sure will work itself out. Uh, Over the last week, he's number 36, and again, missing his free throws, but you know he's been good, and his defensive stats could actually even get better from where they're at right now. But no, I'm not buying in on the Grayson Allen thing. Nine shots. If you make two-thirds of your shots, you're probably going to have a better ball game, and then Charlotte brings that out in everybody. And there's another note in uh, in this next ball game, and that's on our guy Jay Sean Tate, who... We held on to as long as humanly possible, and he just went bananas in this one. 32, 10, and 7, two steals, five blocks, a crazy, crazy ball game, just a monster effort, but it's also worth pointing out, he was kind of the last man standing. Kevin Porter left uh, at halftime with a thigh contusion. Christian Wood left early, came back, and then left again with a twisted ankle. He only played nine minutes. So 
all of the usage guys were gone. Jay Shante got 15 shots, made most of them, took 10 free throws and made most of those two. He had the best game of the night. It's not going to be this good every ball game. We know enough about his fantasy profile to know that seven defensive stats is not going to stick. These other guys are going to come back eventually. Um, it is, however, worth noting that when Wood went down, the Rockets went to Daniel Tice at center. Alperin Sengun still only saw 13 minutes as the Rockets won another ball game. They're actually trying to put some victories under their belt and just feel a little bit better. And who can blame them? Things, look, they'll tank just fine without doing it on purpose. Sometimes players need to see a few in the win column, just so the season doesn't break you. Still no Jalen Green. Garrison Matthews continues to be a very nice fill-in option there. Four more three-pointers, a steal on good percentages. I think you can keep using him. Armani Brooks stepped up with 18 and four, two steals and two blocks. I don't think we can make any real hard calls on the Rockets between now and their next ballgame until we get a report on Kevin Porter, on Christian Wood. I can't stand Eric Gordon, so I'm not even considering venturing into that universe. Uh, But certainly if either of those guys is out, I think you probably have to start Jay Sean Tate. And I think your Garrison Matthews was a go anyway. Thunder. uh, Played better in this one than they did in their previous game against the Rockets, but the result was the same. They lost. Jeremiah Robinson Earl was better, but missed two free throws, 12-9-4 with a steal. I mean, that's, like, good enough. Shea was good, which was needed on the fantasy side. Still very, very grateful that I didn't risk it with him. I mean, the risk there was you want him to be very, very good until they shut him down, and he hasn't... He's been cold. This will move the needle in the right direction. Lou Dort still hanging on somehow. Uh, that's a tough one, man. I, uh, the Lou Dort thing. Well, let's see. Where is where is Shea on this season? 80? Yeah. Eh. That's not all that exciting. Lou Dort is 101. Both of those guys are a go. But, ah, I don't know, man. The Dallas Mavericks wiped the floor with the Pelicans. Luka, KP, they got what they needed to out of the big guns in this ballgame. And Jalen Brunson looked good also. So we kind of got to see everything we wanted. Reggie Bullock took Tim Hardaway Jr.'s starting spot, but that didn't matter. Neither one of those guys has been startable when the team's healthy anyway. Uh, Maxi Kleba was someone we were looking at. If Kristaps Porzingis had to miss any time, he didn't. So Porzingis came roaring back with a double-double and two blocks, further solidifying himself in the first round right now. KP number 11. Chris Paul's big game moved him back in front of Porzingis. They're basically neck and neck right now. If Cat has to miss any time, you might see Porzingis even move in front there. And remember, LeBron has only played 11 games so far. So, you know, I know Porzingis has missed a few ball games, but some of this stuff is a bit overblown when you think about how good he's been on a per game and how the other guys in that top tier... Some of them were playing in all the games, but certainly not all of them. Jokic has missed a few. Butler's missed a few. LeBron's missed a bunch. It's been a great year so far for Porzingis, especially now that he got the field goal percent in order. First rounder per game. Luka, meanwhile, no one will ever really believe the math on Luka Doncic, who's just an incredible, incredible basketball player, and you want to watch him every time out, but he can't shoot free throws. And it sinks. And his turnovers are nuts. And in nine caddies, number 48 right now. He's behind the likes of Mo Bamba and Cole Anthony. You wouldn't even believe it. Oh, by the way, JJJ, I don't know if we updated after the, all the stats computed from that last ball game. He's number 34 right now. Still only shooting 41%. You get that sucker up to 44, this dude climbs into that second round territory. That's where we wanted him. Honestly, I can't believe anyone on the Pels had even a remotely decent ballgame here, but I guess they're fortunate they got to 107 points, so not all was lost. Devontae Graham was serviceable. He's been trending down very hard of late and has... I mean, he's, he's a streamer, really. Like, it, it's probably unkind of us to refer to it, but people are more than willing to trot him out there every day while clowning on DeAnthony Melton, who's number 108. Boyan Bogdanovich, 104. Franz Wagner, 113, is better than Devontae Graham to this point. 
And then Rocco's right in there with him, who's been at times just almost unusable and right next to Devontae Graham. Josh Hart was out. JV had a rare off night. It happens. He's human. And uh, Valanciunas has now fallen to number 20 because of, of all things, field goal percent. We kind of needed that to be better. Yes, losing usage as the team maybe ultimately gets healthy is going to hurt him overall. But if he gets his field goal percent back up from 50 to like 54 or 56, that actually, it's not a net win, but it, it curbs a bit of the loss. I drafted JV thinking I was going to get a field goal percent monster. I'm not complaining that he's been inside the top 20 all season so far, but he's kind of gotten there in a weird way. Three pointers have been a part of it somehow. Anyway, um, Ingram, JV, and Josh Hart. Those are the only guys you can start on New Orleans right now. It's pretty easy, isn't it? And before we get to the final game of the night, the nightcap, Sacramento and the Clippers, do want to also remind you guys once again, this podcast brought to you by our friends at manscaped.com. Use coupon code HOOPBALL20. Again, yes, we'll be updated soon. To get 20% off and free shipping on your order at manscaped.com makes a fantastic holiday gift. Hey, it's Hanukkah right now. Why don't you get the uh, fuzzy friend of yours, maybe it's me, (laughs) a Hanukkah gift to help trim the excess hair. Neck, back, neck, back, I say again, neck or back. Manscaped.com has the tool, HoopBall20 for 20% off and free shipping on your Hanukkah present to your good Ashkenazi friend, (laughs) whoever they may be. Uh, Definitely do check that out. I mentioned on yesterday's pod, by the way, we're really excited that next week we're going to be starting a partnership with the uh, excellent folks over at Thrive Fantasy. And the week after that, we'll be renewing our partnership from last year with the fine folks over at ExpressVPN. So stay tuned. We're going to have some deals we can throw your way on that stuff. Also, it sounds like we might have a deal on a... Uh, alcohol delivery service. That may be coming your way here in the next couple weeks, too. Pretty cool stuff. Hoopball. Now Sports Ethos. Growing. We're going to need new coupon codes for all this stuff. Thank you, guys, by the way. The only reason this stuff happens is because you dudes and dudettes uh, or uh, non-binary folk are continuing to rate and review the pod. Five-star review on the show. If you like what we've been doing here. Um, and again, please do hit me up on Twitter if you did or did not like the, uh, the, the weird breaking news stuff we tried yesterday. It, 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 I, I don't know. We'll see. I do kind of want to try it again when it's kind of separated from the overall show. Um, but only if you guys think there's some value in that. Okay, as promised, the last one on the docket, and that's not like we saved the best for last or anything. The Kings and the Clippers played kind of an ugly ball game Worth noting that Terrence Davis got the start at small forward. Uh, Shemezi Metu got the start at power forward again. He only played 23 minutes. Uh, Terrence Davis played 30, which I suppose was notable. If only, if we can find out that he's starting again ahead of time, there's probably some sort of inherent value in that. I don't know. I, like, there's there's... A little bit of upside there. We've seen him pop off. We've also seen him completely disappear. His fantasy game does seem to be pretty heavily predicated on making a few three-pointers, and then other stuff kind of falls into place. So, uh, no, I'm not racing out to worry about this one, not with the sheer volume of streamer-level guys floating around right now, and some of them longer streams than whatever it is going on with, with Harrison Barnes and Mo Harkless and Marvin Bagley that have freed up all of these power forward and and small forward minutes on the Sacramento Kings. Again, if you find out early that he's going to get the start, I I suppose there's a path there. But again, also, Buddy Heald was terrible in this game, and and that could flip who gets those small forward minutes and who's taking and or making the three-pointers. I I don't know. I just don't think it's really worth chasing, frankly. Uh, Overall, this is this is kind of a walk in the park for Sacramento. Clippers didn't have their guys. Paul George was resting for this ball game, so the uh, Batum still in COVID protocol. So Clippers went to kind of a weird lineup. If it's Zubats at center, Marcus Morris at center playing small forward, Serge Ibaka at center playing power forward. So they went to a three center lineup, 
and it was ugly. Luke Kennard had a decent ball game off the bench. You can't really trust that nightly. Ivica Zubats was solid again in 24 minutes, but his minutes have been trending down. So that one's kind of a... That allows us to hang on a little bit longer. And Reggie Jackson continues to, to suffer through the same stuff that's been bugging him all year, which is very low field goal percent on really high volume, but just not enough other stuff. I thought for sure we'd see him start to climb up and over that that field goal percent hurdle, but he's still shooting under 40%. He's going the wrong way. And his free throws haven't been as good as they need to be at just 81.5%. That's got to be a big-time positive for him, and it hasn't been. So Reggie Jackson seems to be sort of settling into that streamer level as well, certainly better suited for points leagues than anything else. And when you look at the other centers, or the other centers, the any center on this Clippers roster, Zubat's still the guy who's hanging on. Ibaka's body isn't going to take it. Marcus Morris just doesn't have fantasy game, not since he was the primary guy in New York. It just it, It's not going to be there for him without a ton of volume. I think you can pretty much leave any of those dudes on the wire. I'm okay with people using Zubat's here because he's still sort of hanging on desperately at times, but he's hanging on to value. He's, he hasn't fallen out of it yet. And uh, the rest of these things are just sort of gross. So it's Paul George. If he's a Zubats, and then I think we'll probably see Nick Batum do enough when he gets back. Because the other guys just aren't very good, and the Clippers are losing without Batum. If you want the best case for Nick Batum to play, it's that the Clippers have looked bad without him. There's your nice test case. What do we want to do with tonight? What do we want to do with tonight? Thursday evening, five-game card. A couple of the things that we've been semi-tracking are back on the board. Damian Lillard's going to miss his first ball game tonight, so you can keep an eye on Anthony Simons. We got some Dwayne Dedman information yesterday. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies without John Morant. We haven't had a great look at DeAnthony Melton yet. Does seem like Tyus Jones is going to play full starters minutes, which I think generally means he'll be better than he was in the last game, but he's getting assists. He's getting steals. You just kind of need a little bit of scoring to come around. That's what's holding him back so far in that fill-in role. And then with the, with the Knicks, R.J. Barrett's questionable, so we might not get all the data we need on their guard wing rotation because the guard wing situation there is all kind of jumbled into one big bucket. You've got Derrick Rose... Uh, in there off the bench. You've got Emmanuel Quickly in there off the bench. Burks and Fournier are probably your starters. R.J. Barrett's in there as a starter. So there's like five guys dealing with three roster spots or three positions, I guess we should say. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward. They're kind of all those guys, which feels like there could be enough for maybe even four of the five to post value. We just kind of want to see who stays above the threshold. I, I, we're pretty confident that Alec Burks is going to be solid. I think Derrick Rose is locked in. R.J. Barrett's a brutal category league guy. Absolutely brutal. The questions, I think, are Fournier and Quickly. Fournier has been scoring better lately, but he hasn't been doing much else. And then Quickly also has been scoring better lately. Got some rebounds in that last ballgame, but we know enough about his natural fantasy inclination to know that that's not something that's going to stick. And that's probably the big stuff for tonight. We just want to, uh, we're looking for a little bit of confirmation on a short five game Thursday card. Again, drop me a follow on Twitter at Dan Vesper. Hit me up if you want to be a part of our madness here at Hoopball. Again, we're looking for footballers, baseballers on the fantasy side or reality side. Want to cover a team? Want to cover a team in any of the three major sports? Hit me up on Twitter. Want to be a part of our DFS team? Hit me up on Twitter. You name it, we're looking for. You, he says, pointing at his computer screen. Have a wonderful, lovely, pleasant, delightful Thursday. I'm Dan Vespers. This is Fantasy NBA Today, a sports ethos presentation. We'll talk at you tomorrow. So long, everybody. Hello, this is Discover, and we take customer service very seriously. We know that if you have a question or concern about your credit card, that's a serious matter, and you need to talk to a real person about it. So we offer around-the-clock access to seriously talented representatives in the USA. Again, 
It's a serious endeavor. The only funny thing about it is Bob. If you call us and Bob answers, you're in for a treat. Get 100% U.S.-based customer service and talk to a real person day or night. Discover exceptionally common sense. At Kroger, we know the holiday season is going to be special for everyone. So use the Kroger app to get personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. That way you'll get all the fresh holiday specialties you love at prices that are lower than low. Kroger, fresh for everyone. And now you'll find more ways to save on your favorites. When you download digital coupons, you can use up to five times in one transaction. Kroger, fresh for everyone. 